Joining me now is Latasha Brown, the Atlanta-based co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund. Uh, Latasha, thanks so much for coming on the show. The Warnock campaign and outside groups have pointed out Herschel Walker's history of self-serving lies, multiple allegations of domestic violence, or threats of violence, his lack of qualifications. But in Politico recently, you said, and I quote, their sole focus on Walker as an individual is not working. You go on to say of Walker, he's a black man, a black man being flawed, a black man not having integrity, a black man not taking care of his children. Ain't that what they think about us anyway? That's pretty bleak, Latasha. What did you mean by that? Unpack that some more for us. You know, one, thank you for having me, Mitty. But I think that we have to really recognize that the Republicans have had a sinister way, historically, of exploiting Black pain and literally projecting an image of who we are, who's an acceptable Black, those who can be controlled, those who seem harmless and dangerous. And I think that they've done that especially in this particular race. When you look at Herschel Walker, we know that there are some problems there. There are some cognitive problems there. This is a man that says the world has too many trees. You know, this is a man who literally, when you talk to him, he said himself, I'm not smart. He said self-demeaning demeaning things about, about himself. He's shown a, a Paw Patrol badge at a, at a debate, and he's not been co coherent on the issue. But they don't care about that. You know, I've, as I've always said, but they would, it could be Kermit the Frog or someone else, that anybody, he, what, basically he is a placeholder, right? And they have actually been projecting this image of him being this black man that can be controlled of, of jock, someone who's run the ball and he'll do whatever we want him to do and say whatever we want him to say. We've seen that so over and over. That's, that's not a new play. That's an old play. So, Latasha, let me just clarify. What do you believe Raphael Warnock should be doing that he isn't? When you watch the debate on Friday, as a Georgian voter, as a TV viewer, do you think he should have been more aggressive uh, in going after Walker? There was a moment in the debate where Walker accused Warnock of supporting the uh, abortion of black babies, even though he's the one who's accused, he denies it, accused of paying for a secret abortion of a black baby. You know, I think that Warnock has ran a clean campaign, and I think that he's actually running a campaign to stay on the high road. But we're in these these moments right now that we're literally going to have to recognize that we have, there are two groups of, that are vying for power. And one of those groups right now is the Republicans, regardless of whether you are on the spectrum, that are literally trying to unravel democracy. And that uh, 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 what we see is they have a candidate that is in place right now to actually be able to do to be this racial flag for them, knowing that they're working against an agenda for communities of color. I think that um, Senator Warnock should lean into his record, that he should lean into the record, not run away from the record of President Biden, but literally on the recent uh, progress that President Biden has made in his administration, I think that he should lean into that. He should go hard in the paint at this point and really let people know what is at stake. The danger of having um, to having a Herschel Walker in office. That is beyond what people think about his personality. The problem is he will not be able to govern in such a way to serve the people of Georgia. And I think Warnock should continue to remind people of that. So then there's the issue of GOP voter restrictions, which you and I have discussed many times before. It got a strange defender in Friday's debate moderator, Tina Tayu Shaw, who pointed out that black turnout rose since the law was passed, without pointing out that the gap between black and white voting is as high as it's ever been. I mean, with journalists like these, how do you even push back against the Georgia law and educate voters about how suppressive it is? You know, I, I was deeply, deeply disappointed because it, what it appeared like to me in that debate is that the debate, that there were unfair questions that I thought went to, to um, Senator Warnock. But there are three problems with, I think, the way that she framed the questions. One, it ignored the very basic premise that there is a deep inequities in between of having access to the ballot. That part of what we see was not just around black turnout is not a result of saying that racism doesn't exist or voter suppression exists. Right. What it does speak to is it speaks to this community and the organizing to actually go and try to overcome those barriers as much as possible. But then when you look at the gap and the inequities of the voter turnout, then that's where you see where the rubber hits the road, that it is making a tremendous difference. The turnout is not a result of what the law is. The turnout is a result of people being motivated, being organized to go out to the vote. That's the same as saying that black success in this country is a result of a lack of racism. We know that's not true. What it is a result of, it is a result of an organization and of people who are literally determined and committed 
to stand in their agency and their power. And we're seeing that in Georgia, but we are still seeing voter suppression have a tremendous impact on black voters and voters of color in this state. And of course, Latasha, you can't talk about the Georgia voting restrictions without talking about Brian Kemp, the GOP governor who signed them into law, former secretary of state. He is set to face off with Democrat Stacey Abrams in a debate on Monday, the first day of early voting. Uh, Kemp and other Republicans have knocked Abrams for not conceding to Kemp in their 2018 race. The GOP basically says she's the Democratic Party's equivalent of Trump, even though Abrams did accept Kemp's inauguration, never led a violent revolt uh, at the Georgia state capitol. The criticism, though, is likely to come up in the debate. How should Abrams answer it? You know, I think there's a couple of things, Mitty. The first thing is I think that it's quite comical um, that they would talk about who concedes and when one actually led an insurrection. You know, the difference and distinction of that Stacey Abrams, she respected the process, respected the will of the voters, and although she actually was able to call out, as she did, that there was something fishy that happened in the 2018 election, and essentially because of Ryan Kemp, abusing his power as secretary of state, he actually wound up getting that, um, going into that, that, that seat as governor. She did not lead an insurrection. She did not literally t say the results weren't um, legitimate, nor did she do anything to undermine democracy. That is a big distinction. I think that she should lean into the fact that you can call out those things that you don't agree with and still respect the democratic process. That's a distinction that she can say that Brian Kemp and his, and his, his friends at the Republican Party cannot claim. So last week on Chris Hayes' show, I was guest hosting and I interviewed Stacey Abrams and asked her about Democrats fading poll numbers and the concerns that in the wake of the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, abortion might not still be the big motivating issue that a lot of Democrats think it is. Have a listen to what she said. This is a daily conversation because it is as much an economic issue as it is a health care issue. And Brian Kemp has proven time and again he does not care about the women of Georgia. Latasha, do you agree with that, or is it a miscalculation to focus so much on abortion rights in this election cycle when a lot of people are hurting and want to talk about the economy? No, I think that she's on to something. I think that we really recognize that what is at stake is not just this election around two parties vying for power, but at the end of the day, what we're seeing is we're seeing our freedoms, the very basic freedom of reproductive rights, reproductive health and justice, that we're seeing that be attacked. And I think she should lean into that because I think that is a critical issue. I also think that in this moment that we find ourselves right now, for all that is said, polls do not win elections. People do. You know, just today, as we're doing work on the early vote, uh, uh, as we're doing work in early voting, we've been getting reports of organizations that are saying that people are saying that they're going to vote, that there is going to be a substantial turnout in this election. That's what I anticipate. I think oftentimes the right severely underestimates us. And uh, unfortunately, they don't talk to a lot of the voters who are, are infrequent voters or new or young voters. One last question, Natasha. Some critics might say that Abrams, who has been a prolific organizer and fundraiser, has raised her national profile. She's been all over national media. She's become a bit of a celebrity. And her critics say that that means she's perceived as not being focused on the people of Georgia as much as Brian Kemp. She's perceived as a national figure, not a state figure, and that's harming her. What do you say in response to those criticisms? You know, I think that's quite interesting, the fact, and really that's coming from, those are dog whistles coming from the Republican Party. Quite, uh, that's interesting um, in light of the fact this is the party that got behind Trump, Mr. Television himself, television reality star himself. <laughs> This is the party that also got behind Ronald Reagan, Mr. Actor himself. They have had an infatuation with, with, with leaders that literally have not represented their own communities, but actually have had this national profile. What I think of Stacey, I think Stacey's profile is not a result of her being Hollywood, but as a result of her being a clear, concise leader. I think people all across this country want to have someone that is actually lifting up the issues that really matter, that stand in the space of integrity and push back, and really push back on those that are actually anti-democratic forces. She's done that. I am not surprised that she's inspiring people, not over in Georgia, but all across this country and in the world. That's the kind of leadership that we need, those that will stand in the space of truth and fight for democracy in this nation. So I'm not surprised that she receives uh, support outside of the state of Georgia. But more importantly, I'm very, very excited that she is actually receiving support in Georgia. That is really what they are afraid of. 
It's also worth pointing out that Herschel Walker, who is running for the Senate in Georgia, uh, spent much of the past decade living in Texas. Uh, Latasha Brown, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.